Hi everyone. When I was a child, I loved to watch cartoons. And now I'm realizing how much of an activist and of a political thinker I am thanks to those cartoons. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Blaine, but this time you put the trousers on the chimp. On today's episode, we'll be checking on Pinky and the Brain. For those of you who don't know it, Pinky and the Brain was a segment in a comedy cartoon show that was called Animaniacs. It was prepared by the Warner Brothers and it was running between 1993 and 1998. If you're not familiar with the show, I'm pretty sure that you know the Waka song about the countries of the world. Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman, Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Cyprus, Iraq, and Iran. I was not the biggest fan of this show when I was a child, but I'm really excited because Pinky and the Brain was a favorite of all my friends. So let's get into it. The episode we'll be checking on today is called Meet John Brain. Here's what you need to know. Pinky and the Brain are lab experiments. And because of that, the brain is so smart. The danger of it is that now the brain is obsessed with conquering the world and he just wants a world domination. Pinky, on the other hand, is a very stupid one. So they every day manage to mess up their plan and they come up the next day with a new one. Now the new plan is politics. So let's check it out. What's tonight's plan to take over the world brain? <laughs> A gizmo? Zod. A thingy? Pinky, the world's game is politics, and I plan to win this game by running for president. And once I am ensconced in the White House, I will take over the world. No. Larry, I would like to announce my candidacy for president of the United States. You are running for president, Mr. Brain. Why are you doing that? I plan to take over the world. <laughs> I just want to stop here because um, here's the thing that's very common in the American system especially when you have very well established bodies that you have already a candidate that will announce oh I want to be the next president I want to be the next mayor I want to be the next governor or senator or you call it so uh, the announcement is always the first step and then what follows normally is signature collection to validate that you can apply to be a candidate. Uh, normally that's a job that you do along with some volunteers. You cannot just announce and then become part of the race just like that. But what I wanted to analyze was actually the message that the brain was using. I want to take over the world and that is my purpose. Actually, it might sound crazy, but you see many candidates that say outrageous things think of Trump and the Muslim ban and the wall because those outrageous things are so outrageous that sometimes actually people just say oh he had a very good humor or he actually is just very strong on stance but maybe he will not come through because the system will stop it and if we learn something with Trump it's actually that those candidates are very very dangerous. expecting the independent candidate for president John Brain to speak with reporters by remote broadcast any moment now. Good evening ladies and gentlemen of the press. Your questions. Mr. Brain, Mr. Brain, Mr. Brain. What a visionary cartoon. This is a cartoon from 1993 or 1995 I guess and they already were thinking of uh, Zoom calls. I don't know if the Warner Brothers knew that we were be living like this in 2021, but this is very, very funny that they are already thinking of these press conferences without meeting actually the candidate. Mr. Brain, have you chosen a running mate to be your vice president? Yes, I have. Admiral Pinky. No! <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> actually, many times these uh, joke candidates, they try to look for the endorsement of some law enforcement uh, authorities, some military retire, uh, military figure and so on because they make them look as the strong figure which is not as uh, relevant or not that important but actually it seems to work with a lot of people that like the figures of authority uh, representing them in office. Mr. Brain, why have you not yet appeared in public? I've been developing my plan for the presidency. Uh-huh. And what is it, sir? I want to A, cut the deficit, B, lower taxes, 
and C, take over the world. <laughs> 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 Again, he's using this outrageous element of his campaign and of his message to actually engage with people. I'm gonna give it to Brain this time because he actually involved other policies and uh, those things are not very popular. But if you actually get to a point where you can mix both of them and not only talking about policies, then actually it's not a bad idea to help do your platform. I like him. Mr. Brain, you seem to have very large ears, a red nose, and fur growing on your head. There are concerns about your health. I am as healthy as the next mouse, as long as I avoid cats. <laughs> now, what do you suppose it means by that? Well, he doesn't mean a real mouse. He means uh, the little guy, like you and me. And cats, well, he means fat cats. The bureaucratic fat cats, yeah. This cat and mouse reference works in so many levels in so many political cultures and i'm not kidding about this because the cat is always dish in vision as this uh oppressor as this predator um there is a very popular cartoon here in hungary uh from the communist era that is called machka fogo and it's basically a call um the cat catcher and it's a really really funny uh, satirical uh, cartoon about how the cats are being the oppressors and the mice are being the little guy but the interesting thing is that regular people here start to understand of saying, oh, if this is the metaphor, and people think about this, if this is the metaphor that he is using, then that represents me. People actually, when they see political figures, leaders, and so on, they actually try to try to build up some type of connection and then make up these conclusions just out of nowhere. Mr. Boyne. You've captivated the voters' common sense, but what about you personally? Are you married? Yes. Let me introduce my lovely wife, Pinkinia. Hello, Barbara! Zod! I am woman! Hear me roar! <laughs> no! <laughs> when you enter into a public position, rather leading a social movement or a political party, if you are a candidate, you have to be ready to the fact that media is going to ask about your personal life. And now, more days, with social media and so on, you are expected to actually show a little bit of your personal life. Many politicians and many leaders confuse this with saying, I need to show my cats, I need to show my dogs, I need to show my husband, but that is not the case. Remember that your family is gonna be part of this scrutiny, but you need to have a conversation with them and then let them know that it's okay to be scrutinized, but you have to ask for their permission for them to be part of that life that you have. You cannot just assume that you can drag them. It's John Brain's new commercial. When I take over the country, everyone will work for me. He means jobs. Jobs for everyone. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. If people oppose me, I'll teach them a lesson. Thank goodness. He's for better education. So surrender quietly and no one will be hurt. Uh, no one will be sick. Yes, health care. <laughs> Great health care. Many people wonder of why QAnon happened as a theory and so on. But then actually, this is the interesting part. Many times when you're a leader, many times when you're in these scrutiny positions, you don't realize it, but you are creating some kind of connection with the public and then people start assuming and reading between the lines of whatever you say. That is why when you do, for example, a press conference, it's not enough just to have the press conference. You also have to publish what you said and then you're gonna be scrutinized about it. You have to tweet about it. You have to put it on your social media because otherwise people read between the lines. Trump many times, yes, was over communicated on Twitter, in Twitter, but he was silent in many issues. And then that silence is actually what created those conspiracy theories for us to understand what was going on, uh, especially with QAnon, for example. Brain needs polls. Eat that brain. No. It looks like you're going to win. You'll be president, brain. It's amazing you haven't ruined my campaign, Pinky. Oh. I can only do so much, Brain. So here, Brain tells Pinky, you might damage my campaign. And I wonder, what campaign? This 
is not a campaign. A TV campaign, an ad campaign, a poster campaign is not a campaign alone. A campaign has to have many elements and those elements are of actually presence because people expect to talk to a candidate. People expect to actually have this interaction. Of course, you have, for example, uh, this, um, this, this idea that many times if the mysterious figure actually might gain popularity, but a real campaign is one that has elements of physical presence and visits to the community, conversations, leafletings, and so on. If this campaign goes wrong, it's not because of Pinky, it's actually because of the brain. I think, Pinky, the time has come to finally greet my public in person. It's time for them to meet John Brain. Uh, if you follow American politics, it looks already like a national convention because they have the state signs and so on where they vote for the final candidate of one of the two major parties. I don't think that this is the case. Uh, I think that I haven't even seen a debate. I don't think that he has won the pre-election to be the candidate of his party. Um, but this is a clear reference to the national conventions that the major parties do. Is this thing on? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome no. our next president, Mr. John Brain. Greetings. <gasps> he really is a mouse. <laughs> But, but when I take over the world, I promise to rule in a fair and just manner. I'm not surprised here. And this is the danger with many times when those candidates that believe that they just should be on media instead of meeting people. Uh, the leader of today has to be a community manager. The leader of today has to be engaged and be present in many places. It cannot run only a campaign because people build up these huge expectations and if the candidate meets someone in reality and then they don't meet those expectations, that is the biggest damage to the campaign that can ever happen. Since revealing himself as a fraud, John Brain has fallen to nowhere in the polls. Turn that off, Pinky. But a newcomer, a Mr. Boo, is climbing in the... I need to concentrate on a more scientific plan for tomorrow night. What, Vane? What are we going to do tomorrow night? You know. They're Pinky, they're Pinky and the Brain, 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 Brain. Now, this is an interesting one. And maybe I'm reading a little bit between the lines, but actually you see a lot of similarities with the rhetoric of today's politicians. And then some people have said that actually Trump is a pioneer and then that many politicians will start speaking like Trump in the future. Probably. I think that that will happen. But then it is funny that in 1993 uh, we already had these visions of the future, not only with the type of rhetoric that we will be having today, but also with the technology, with the Zoom calls and the online uh, media conferences. So, um, so that's a very funny one. It's that time again. To have elective surgery? To change our underwear? No, it's time to learn the day's lesson. So let's try to draw some lessons from today's episode. I want to emphasize on three things. The first one is on capitalizing on the outrageous. Many times, and this is not only because of he was saying, I want to take over the world, many times movements and political parties, they actually have to capitalize on something that is outrageous. I'm talking about something that maybe sparks debate and sparks controversy. That will engage a lot of people, especially in social media. You will see that a lot of people want to comment uh, and they will react very well if, if rather the politician or the organizations uh, try to take a little bit of the water on what is outrageous. Secondly, this is a very good reminder that media is important, but it's not the only element of a campaign. Campaigns have a lot of elements, and the main element of a campaign is actually engage people. The brain didn't have any volunteers. 
The brain had only followers that were building up on expectations and then once that he met with them, they actually realized just because this was a campaign that was run only on media, that those expectations were not the best. And the last thing I want to talk about is being very clear on the message that you are delivering because you have to understand that if you have a platform, you have a responsibility and you have a certain influence over the people. So if you don't clarify any situation, people will actually start assuming and then reading between the lines. That's why it's very important. Even if you are not a political candidate yourself, if you are working for the organization, if you're working for the organization, the most important thing that you have to do is always, yes, make a press conference, but then afterwards, publish it online, publish it on social media, make sure to engage people in the discussion and then revise all the time that message because otherwise people will just assume things and then they will read between the lines. This was a fun episode to review. As I said, I was not the biggest fan of Animaniacs. I was not the biggest fan of Pinky and the Brain, but it makes sense on the mouse brain that if you want to dominate the world, maybe politics is one of the vehicles. As I have said before, Politics is one of the vehicles, but it's not the only vehicle. I actually think that right now media would have been a better vehicle for him if that's the way that he was comfortable or that is the medium that he feels more comfortable with. But what do you think? Leave a comment below. Maybe suggest me what other cartoons should be I reacting to. Subscribe, hit the bell, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.